Hello there. Many thanks for joining us at this hour on QTV. You are watching QTV News and I am Ajibin Tudrame in tonight's top stories. Following the government's temporary ban on the importation of poultry products into the country after the recent outbreak of bird flu in Senegal, QTV visited Serokunda Market to find out the impact of the ban. A new solar-powered water borehole was inaugurated at Banyaka Sufalit Women's Garden by Supersonics, a microfinance institution, through its support initiative. Dajo Stores, which offers homegrown Gambian produce, has opened its doors in Kololi on Friday. In international news, residents of the ancestral Indian village of Kamala Harris celebrated her inauguration as U.S. Vice President on Wednesday. The leaders of the U.S. Senate agreed on Friday to push back former President Donald Trump's impeachment trial by two weeks. In sports news, the coach of Banjo United Football Club has said that attacking players need to improve on their finishing. Well, those were our top stories for tonight's bulletin. Do stay tuned for the news in detail. Now on to local stories. Following the Gambia's temporary ban on the importation of poultry products into the country after the recent outbreak of bird flu in Senegal, QTV visited Serokunda Market to find out the impact of the ban. Here is the report. The announcement on the temporary ban was made last week at an Agriculture Ministry press conference and the effects of the ban were immediately felt at the Serokunda Market. Prices of chicken and eggs have exorbitantly skyrocketed. We found out that a carton of chicken legs, which was $750, has now been increased to $1,200. A kilo of chicken legs, which was $100, is now selling at $120. A carton of eggs that was being sold for $1,500 is now $2,100. And a crate is priced at $200. The vendors say these products are scarce in the market. Amadou Jalo, a shopkeeper, says the tax levy on these goods makes the products expensive, adding that stakeholders need to dialogue with buyers to address the issue. I say bagas with body. First time, feel I don't get it. Understand? Why leggy bagas with body if they get Senegal? Understand? Fake bagas. I want to know what's the reason for the sudden price hike, not only for chicken, but also cooking oil and others. Some items imported from Senegal are cheaper than those produced here. The government needs to look for a solution. Selu Jalo also sells chicken products, shares similar views. Every day of the yoke. Every day, last time it was 1,315 kilo, you know, 1,004, time of call, 1,475. The price of a carton of chicken increases every day. The last time it was $1,300 for a 15 kilo. Later, it was increased to $1,400. Today, I was told it is increased to $1,475. It will be harder for me to sell it at that price. Selu added that he has not heard about the temporary ban of these products. He believes that the taxes levied on these goods might be the reason for the price hike. Saini Sise, a customer bemoaned the sudden price increment of chicken products. <laughs> I came to buy chicken. I have roamed the market tirelessly, but they told me chicken is scarce. At this stop, the owner told me a cutting is $1,200, which is quite expensive. Saini Sisi added that his budget is less than what he found at the market. Something must be done about this because most people live below the poverty line. The Ministry of Trade needs to enforce a price control system. I budgeted for $700 a cutting. Now my plans have changed. Adam Demba Job, the president of Poultry Farmers Cooperative, said farmers are ready to supply the nation with poultry products if the need arises. However, what we have seen at the Serokunda market is alarming. Dajo stores opened its doors in Kololi on Friday, offering homegrown Gambian produce. The store aims to connect entrepreneurs and consumers both locally and internationally. Babu Kasi has the rest of that story. All items in this shop are made in the Gambia. 
They are locally produced, beautifully packaged, and can be sold locally and internationally. The store, according to the founder, is designed to bridge the gap between the entrepreneur and the customer. At the official opening, the CEO of the Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Ali Useka, said women should be supported in all aspects. He added that the founders aim to support women entrepreneurs of the country. Kutubo Jaju of the Department of Sea Trade under the Ministry of Trade said this store is a perfect place for businesses and exporters who are aiming for international markets. If the products are packaged properly, it will attract international market without any marketing. So the products will market themselves. So need, they need to improve on their standards, improve on the packaging and the finishing of their product that will help them to attract the global market. So I will advise all entrepreneurs to work on their finishing, to work on their packaging in order to attract uh, international market which will give them more income and they will have a sustainable business in the country. On Sidi Keta, the Minister of Trade, Regional Integration and Employment, says his ministry is happy to be associated with such developments, especially for women who are playing their quota in the socio-economic development of the country. This is a women enterprise and it's private sector driven. It's also uh, there to support fellow women in business. The African free trade area has just kicked in, so geography is no longer a constraint. This can be a gateway to the whole of Africa. So Mrs. Gom, we are very proud of your endeavor, and as a ministry, we look forward to your success, and we count on all stakeholders, the community, the ladies, the, 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 the buyers, to come and patronize so that the, this business will grow from strength to strength. Madam Wadangom, the founder of Dajo, said the investment is a joint venture with a relative called Mrs. Sohnanjai, with the aim of helping women entrepreneurs reach the international market. In Gambia, we have a lot of raw products, we have a lot of processed products, but it's all scattered. So when you need something, you're asking, where can I get this? You'll have to go out to that place and that place. But if you bring everything all under one roof, it's easier for you to come one-stop shop in different locations and get what you need. Um, the nice thing that I, we have ag agreed to do between me and my partner Sohan and Yai is to make sure we will not sell any of their products more than what they're selling their own products. So what we do, the model is, we take the products from them at a discount rate. And the discount is 20%. So every product they sell here, we get 20%. We don't charge them rent, we don't charge them electricity, all we do is exactly what they're selling is what we're selling. So that if a customer goes to them, they can buy. If they come to us, they'll buy. Madam Gom spoke about their future business plans. One of the reasons I should say, having my partner in the UK is to exactly replicate the same model in the UK. And also we're hoping to get in the US and many countries. Because as you come to Gambia and you see made in China, made in UK, made in USA, it's high time now we see products made in Gambia in different countries and even in the region, you know, like in all the West Africa or in Africa as a whole. Because also we have very good products. We have quality products that are taken from here, taken abroad, processed and brought back to the country. Now we can do all the same. We can still take the raw products, sell them out, but we can also get processed products and it's on the shelves in every supermarket in the UK and beyond. Located in Kololi, just before the Palmarima Johnson at the Icy Wonderland building, the store is here to support, add value and enable businesses to grow through visible supply and demand under one roof. Other speakers who hailed Madam Wadangom for this great initiative include the councillor of Kololi Ward, Peter Mendy, who represented the Lord Mayor of KMC, and Nafi Bari, a friend of Madam Wada who both expressed delight on the importance of having such an important store in the country. Babu Karsi, QTV News. Supersonics, through its microfinance support initiative on Thursday, inaugurated a new solar-powered water borehole at Barkanya Sofalit Women's Garden for vegetables production. The story by Lamin Dabo is narrated by myself. The women of Banyaga have been facing water shortages at their vegetable garden, making farming difficult for them. The project is in the form of a loan scheme for 174 women and is expected to be paid back in installment every three months. At the handing over ceremony, Almami Funding Tal, the vice board chairman of Supersonics, commends the Banyaka Sofalis Women and Gam Solar Company for the water project. 
He went on to explain the motive behind the partnership. We are very pleased that today a son of Banyaka, uh, Mr. Kamara, has brought a project that we believe in, that we think can help uh, the women gardening here to be as effective as possible. An organization like Supersonic should be supporting efforts, uh, efforts that government have started. But because of uh, all the demands on government resources and government time, uh, some of these projects have fallen into some disrepair. We are hoping that uh, with these kind of partnerships, with these kind of engagements, Supersonics uh, will be in a good place to advise the women uh, in their financial management of the proceeds of their ventures. Fatunjai, the PRO of Banyaka Women Sofalit Kafu, expresses delight saying that their water problem is now over. However, she called for more support. The fencing in this garden is now our main problem. Due to its poor condition, we are worried because the animals will enter and eat our vegetables and the cassava we planted. We are calling on NGOs and philanthropists to come to our aid so that we can reap the benefit of our labor. We work here to earn a living and take care of our families. Kadi Bojang Saidi, the Agri Director for West Coast Region, says the microfinance project will go a long way in complementing government's efforts in promoting vegetable gardening and help increase women's income. It is the government project called GALDEP. Although our, our effort may be meager and because of uh, uh, constraints in terms of uh, uh, finance and other things, we know government cannot do everything. But we need the support of other partners like uh, Supersonic and any other body who would like to support the farming community. To support agriculture is a necessity. Agricultural development is everybody's business. If there is no food in the country, hunger does not know whether somebody is a woman or a man or whatever. It affects everybody. So it, is, uh, it, is, it should be our concerted effort to make sure that agricultural production and productivity is taken as a, a, a teamwork. Everybody has a stake. Either you are a farmer or you are not a farmer. Mama Sise, Supersonic's microfinance project's focal person, had this to say. We are expecting a lot from you, and, um, and we believe that we will, we will, we will have a long way to go. And there are so many things on the pipeline. We don't only um, do the the pump thing. We also into um, seeds, fertilizers, and fencing, tractors, and everything. It's like we are focusing more on agriculture and women development. Thank you. Supersonics, as a microfinance institution was established with a vision and a mission to empower Gambian businesses, particularly women enterprises. For over six years, the Financial Institute has been supporting Gambian, particularly women, by giving out loans with competitive interest rate and financial management trainings for women groups across the country aimed at empowering them. <laughs>
where Shyamala Gopalan, Harris's mother, was born in 1938. Decades later, Harris's mother moved to the U.S. to become a biochemical scientist. It was in the U.S. that Gopalan met her husband-to-be, Donald Harris, a respected economist who also immigrated to the United States to study. Today, none of Kamala Harris's relatives still lives in her ancestral village, but that didn't dampen the festive mood there on Wednesday as she prepared to take the oath as the first Asian-American and first black vice president of the United States. Given the 11 and a half hour time difference between Washington and Tulasendra Puram, villagers will have kicked off their celebrations on Wednesday long before Harry started preparing for her swearing in ceremony. They let loose with firecrackers and shared out candy and traditional festive snacks called muraku. The villagers chanted, Long live Kamala Harris, lit firecrackers, offered special prayers in local temples, and walked with pictures of Harris, who visited the village in her childhood when she was five years old. The celebration is now over in the village, and for America, the 2020 presidential election will always be remembered as one that deeply divided the nation and left scars in the heart of democracy. For QTV News, I am Mamoudou Mbouj. The leaders of the U.S. Senate agreed on Friday to push back former President Donald Trump's impeachment trial by two weeks, giving the chamber more time to focus on President Joe Biden's legislative agenda and cabinet nominees. Mamoudou Mbouj again. The House of Representatives is due to formally deliver to the Senate on Monday the impeachment charge accusing Trump of inciting an insurrection, a move that ordinarily would have triggered the beginning of the trial within a day. The charge stems from Trump's incendiary speech to supporters before they stormed the Capitol on January 6th in a rampage that delayed the formal congressional certification of Biden's election victory and left five people dead, including a police officer. Schumer said the new timeline will allow the Senate to move quickly on key Biden appointees and other tasks while giving House lawmakers who will prosecute the case and Trump's team more time to prepare for the trial. During that period, the Senate will continue with cabinet nominations and the COVID-19 relief bill, which would provide relief for millions of Americans who are affected by the pandemic, said Chuck Schumer. Senate Majority Leader. Doc Andres, a spokesman for McConnell, said the senator was pleased Democrats had given Trump's defense more time for due process and fairness. Conviction in the Senate would require a two-thirds vote, meaning 17 of Trump's fellow Republicans would have to vote against him. A conviction would clear the way for a second vote, requiring a simple majority to bar Trump from holding office again. Trump on January 13th became the first U.S. president to have been impeached twice. The Senate acquitted him last year in the previous trial, focused on Trump's request that Ukraine investigate Biden and his son. For QTV News, I am Amurim The coach of Banjul United Football Club has said that attacking players need to improve on their finishing. Lamin Sisi made this remark after another draw in their second GFF First Division League match. Mumudu Gajaga has more. Just when it mattered most, Adama Sidibe throws away a potential winning goal for Marimo. He had all the time and space in the world only to hastily blaze over his shot. In both halves, it was more of poor execution than the lack of goal scoring chances. Of course, you know, we definitely work on uh, finishing at the training ground. You know, we told the players to keep calm when they go to that area. They have to be relaxed and cooperate, you know, so that they can clinically finish those chances. But sometimes, you know, when they come to the game, you know, they hesitate and be in, in a hurry. So that's why, you know, sometimes, you know, they fail to take their chances, yeah. Goal scoring chances are also created when players are fouled in dangerous positions. Mam Gormbub had a free kick in the second half, just outside the box. But his delivery was poor, shooting into the air. Another missed opportunity for Banjul United's Abdullah Sar, who had a beautiful run on the right, 
before releasing a shot blocked by the keeper Joseph Jaju's leg for a corner to the dismay of their supporters. Coach Lamin Sise says players need to improve on their shooting ability. Of course, we need to work on all the areas, you know, especially set pieces, as you mentioned. You know, it's very important. Uh, even yesterday, we spent almost 45 minutes on set pieces, crosses and, you know, set pieces. Very important. But we'll still go back to the training ground and prepare ourselves well. Yeah. Marimo and their first point after two matches while Banjul United drew twice in two games, giving them two points out of a possible six. Elsewhere on Friday, GPA came from behind to beat BK Milan 2-1 at Basori, with Keba Mane scoring and assisting a goal. Momoju Kajaga, QTV News. Well, before we end this blessing, let's take a quick look at our main stories. Following the government temporary ban on the importation of poultry products into the country after the recent outbreak of bird flu in Senegal, QTV visited Serokuna Market to find out the impact of the ban. A new solar-powered water borehole was inaugurated by Banyak of Sofa Lead Women's Garden by Supersonics through its microfinance support initiative. Dajo store specializing in homegrown Gambian produce opened its doors in Kololi on Friday. In international news, Residents of the ancestral Indian village of Kamala Harris celebrated her inauguration as U.S. Vice President on Wednesday. The leaders of the U.S. Senate agreed on Friday to push back former President Donald Trump's impeachment trial by two weeks. In sports news, this coach of Banjo United Football Club has said that attacking players need to improve on their finishing. Well, that's it from me and my team in tonight's bulletin. Thank you for watching and join us tomorrow for another bulletin. Do stay tuned.